At this point in the analysis process, you should have a clearly defined answerable research question and a conceptual framework that helps you to identify which variables you specifically need to answer your research question. You have looked at the available datasets via the National Statistical Agency website or another data bank and determined that the demographic and health surveys are appropriate for your research question. Now it is time to identify variables in the DHS datasets and generate variables for your analysis in a step that I call data preparation. If you have any questions about your analysis workflow, watch the analysis workflow lecture at www.populationsurveyanalysis.com. This lecture on navigating the DHS introduces four key documents to help you identify the right DHS variables for your analysis and fully understand DHS variable definitions. The first document is the DHS final report. In the development of your research question and conceptual framework, you probably read parts of a relevant DHS report. The last appendix of the report contains the questionnaires that were administered in the survey, with the exact wording of each question and the grouping of questions by module. A DHS dataset will contain multiple modules of data, and the variables will be organized in roughly the same order as the questionnaires. Importantly, however, the variables in the Stata dataset will have different question numbers and labels. This is because after each DHS survey, responses are recoded so that variable IDs and labels are common across all DHS datasets, as described in the What is the DHS lecture. While I would not recommend starting with the DHS final report to identify specific variables in Stata, this is a helpful document to refer back to, especially to identify keywords to aid your search for a variable in the Stata dataset. The easiest and recommended place to start your search for variables is the DHS dataset itself using the look for command. For this approach, open the appropriate DHS dataset. I will open the KR or kids recode file in this example. If you need a refresher on the different DHS datasets, refer back to the What is the DHS lecture. With the dataset open in Stata, use the look for command with keywords to identify variables. For example, if I'm looking for mother's age, I can type look for age in the command window. A number of variables have age in the variable label or a category label, but this list is much shorter than if we had searched the entire dataset manually via the variables window. Remember, the mother is the respondent to the questionnaire, and we see two potential variables for her age, V012, the respondent's current age, and V013, her age in five-year groups. To explore the difference between these two variables, we can look at the raw data values with a list statement, or a summary of the data values with tabulate statements. Refer to the Use and Explore lecture for a review of these commands. We see that V012 is a continuous variable of mother's age and years, and V013 is her age and five-year age groups. If you have already decided during the conceptual framework stage how you will define mother's age in your analysis, then you can note the one variable whose values are best suited for your analysis. If you have not yet decided on a variable definition, then note both variables. Here is a quick refresher about recoded variable IDs. The first letter of the variable will tell you which module in the questionnaire the variable is from. All variables related to the women respondent start with the letter V. Notice that there are over a dozen variables in this dataset related to the woman's age. Her age at first birth, her age at sterilization, her height for age percentile, and so on. Then there are variables starting with B from the birth history, including the child's age at death or current age. And there is a section starting with HW from the height weight anthropometry model for children under age 5. It will be important to recognize the difference between women variables and child variables later in this lecture. The second document is the map file, a summary of all variable IDs, labels, and response categories or values. Stata's look for command is very good for searching keywords, so you might never need to refer to the map file. However, for complex variables, especially variables that include a mix of continuous and categorical responses, the map file is a useful reference. The map file is included in the zip file with the dataset that you downloaded from the DHS website. 
To view its contents, right-click and open with Notepad. I recommend using your Control F key to find keywords. For example, I will search for the word time to show you an example of a variable that mixes continuous and categorical values. We see that V115, time to get to water source in minutes, has values 0 to 900 minutes, continuous values, as well as additional categories for respondents who have water on premises, not a du jour regular resident, don't know, or missing. The map file has additional information about the formatting of the data file, which you can ignore for now. The third document, the Recode Manual, lists every variable ID in every recoded DHS dataset with a detailed definition of that variable. To download the Recode Manual, go to www.measuredhs.com, the publication search, and search for the keyword Recode. Since the Measure DHS project is funded through the U.S. government, it is revised every couple of years under a new contract, and hence you will find several versions of the Recode Manual. Just use the most recent version. It includes historical notes. We see that the Recode Manual is an enormous reference document. Usually you will have opened the Recode Manual with a certain variable in mind that you have a question about. Use the Control F keys to navigate to that variable. To further simplify your search, navigate to the relevant questionnaire. For example, I will navigate to the women's questionnaire to learn about variables in the kids' recode file. Here are a few examples. Let us say you opened the recode manual to learn about the sampling weight variable. You use the Control F keys to find the word weight and advance to the section of the manual that provides descriptions of the variables. We find V005, which is the sampling weight in the women's questionnaire and the sampling weight used in the kids' recode file. Here we learn that the sampling weight is an 8-digit variable with 6 implied decimal places. To use the sample weight, divide it by 1 million before applying the weighting factor. All sampling weights are normalized such that the weighted number of cases is identical to the unweighted number of cases when using the full data set with no selection, and so on. This is informative, right? The Recode Manual is telling us to divide V005 by 1 million before we can use it in the analysis, and it is helpful to know that the weighted counts are normalized around 1 so that we can interpret them as weighted frequencies and weighted sample sizes. If the weights are not normalized around 1, then we cannot interpret the weighted totals. Now let us use the Recode Manual to learn about stunting, a measure of child malnutrition derived from a child's height and age. If the child's height is less than negative two standard deviations below the average height for his or her age group, then the child is considered stunted. Using Control F, let us look for stunt. We do not find anything. From reading the DHS report, we know that stunting was measured and reported, so it must be in the Recode Manual. Why do you think we cannot find it? Let us try a different keyword. Since stunting is a measure of height for age, let us look for the word height. We find a number of variables related to height. V439 through V441 are specifically related to height for age. But these are maternal measurements, and the variables start with a V, indicating that the data are about the woman, not her children. So we keep looking. Here we go. The height and weight module, which contains information related to children. Variables HW4 through HW6 look like the variables we are seeking. However, from working with this data set, I happen to know there are more relevant variables than these. If you keep searching, you will find HW70 with a below explanation about the updated child growth standards released by the WHO in 2006. The Recode Manual briefly describes why it was important to update the international standard for median child height for age. Stunting should be calculated from this updated variable. We see that the measures are presented with two implied decimal places, so to produce the actual measure of height for age standard deviations, you must divide HW70 by 100. The two examples provided were of complicated variables, which is often the case when you need to refer to the Recode Manual though you will see that most of the descriptions are very straightforward. For example, V501 is the current marital status of the respondent, and V502 is a simplified version of that variable, where marriage categories are summarized as currently, formally, or never married. 
The previous three documents provided definitions of recode file variables. The fourth document, Guide to DHS Statistics, describes how to calculate common indicators for analysis from these recode variables. For example, the Guide to DHS Statistics has definitions of child stunting, acute respiratory infection, and exclusive breastfeeding, all of which follow an international standard definition, but not mother's education, age, or marital status, which researchers often categorize differently in analyses. Find the Guide to DHS Statistics under the Publications tab at www.measuredhs.com. Let us stay with this example of stunting to see how to define variables for our analysis. Using Control F and the word stunt, we find a page that describes how to calculate all three of the standard child nutrition indicators, stunting, wasting, and underweight. The coverage section tells us that these indicators are for all children aged 0 to 59 months. The numerator section tells us the technical definition of who is considered stunted, which is all children whose height for age Z scores between negative 2.0 and negative 2.99 standard deviations below the mean of the international reference population, and severely stunted children who have a Z score below that. The denominator is all living children aged 0 to 59 months. The next section describes the calculation that produced these Z scores. The section on handling of missing values is handy. Here we learn that children who are not measured, whose values were missing, or whose values were out of range or invalid should be excluded from the calculation. At the stage of deciding which variables to keep for your analysis, these details might not be important to you. However, as you start generating variables for your analysis, these documents will be essential. Despite extensive documentation, you might still have questions that are not answered in the final report, map file, recode manual, or guide to DHS statistics. For these questions, check out the DHS user forum at this website address. Go to populationsurveyanalysis.com for a PDF version of this video and other learning materials that support your analysis of a population survey dataset. <music>